International mast cell specialists have reached a consensus on the diagnosis of mast cell activation syndrome. They have agreed on an overall structure that accommodates everyone with systemic mast cell activation. The structure is divided into three rooms. My version is a little beach cottage. One room is called primary mast cell activation, and that includes mastocytosis, in which the mast cells are self-activating. Another room is called secondary mast cell activation, and that includes things like allergy, chronic autoimmune urticaria, and others, in which factors outside of mast cells cause them to be activated. The third room is called idiopathic mast cell activation, for people in this room, we don't yet know what is causing their mast cells to be activated. What are the criteria for this inclusive diagnosis of mast cell activation syndrome? 1. Symptoms of the type that are commonly seen when mast cells are activated. These symptoms must occur repeatedly or be constant, and no other diagnosis is available to explain them. The symptoms must affect two or more organ systems at the same time, skin, respiratory, etc. Specifically, the skin symptoms that will fit this first criterion are flushing, itching, urticaria, which is hives, angioedema, which is localized swelling. The respiratory symptoms most commonly associated with mast cell mediated release are nasal congestion, nasal itching, wheezing, throat swelling. Other miscellaneous symptoms that fit this criterion are headache, hypotension, diarrhea. Next, the second criterion is lab testing to demonstrate that chemicals or mediators have been released from mast cells when the symptoms occurred. Tryptase is the only mast cell mediator that isn't also released in significant quantities by other cells than mast cells. Blood for total serum tryptase should be drawn between half an hour and four hours after the start of symptoms. Then compare this result with a baseline measurement, which is one done when symptoms are not present. How much difference is needed to demonstrate mast cell activation? <coughs> Multiply the baseline result by 1.2, then add 2. If the person's symptomatic tryptase level is the same or greater than that, they're considered to have a positive result, an indication that mast cell activation had taken place when their symptoms occurred. There can be logistical problems obtaining a blood sample within four hours of the start of symptoms. If this is proving difficult to organize, a 24-hour urine collection could be done to measure another mast cell mediator, prostaglandin D2, or its metabolite, prostaglandin F2. A urine collection done during a day when symptoms are quiet should be compared with a urine collection done when symptoms are present in order to get an indication of likely mast cell activity. Because this is a less specific mediator for mast cells, the greater the difference between these two collections, the more likely one can rely on this indicating mast cell activation. The level of histamine metabolites in urine is not at all specific to mast cell activation, but this test may at times be done to confirm that increased histamine secretion from mast cells and other cells corresponds to increased secretion of prostaglandin D2. So the second criterion for a diagnosis of mast cell activation syndrome is fulfilled if there is an adequate increase in serum tryptase and or an adequate um, increase in urinary prostaglandin D2 or F2 compared to a baseline measurement. Criterion 3. This is a trial of antihistamines. A major response to antihistamine drugs with a long-lasting reduction of symptoms fulfills this diagnostic criterion. A person who meets all three of these criteria is diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome. That is the overall view of this simple and scientifically logical classification of d disorders inside the cottage of mast cell activation syndrome. The process of observation and testing to make an accurate diagnosis of mast cell activation syndrome is very important. 
If a person does not fit these criteria, they need to know what other condition is causing their symptoms and pursue a correct diagnosis. Some of these other disorders include tumors, gastrointestinal diseases, infections, endocrine disorders, skin diseases, and others. Getting better begins with finding out why you are sick.